Well, everybody, it's that time of year again. Yeah, I'm talking, of course, about Trailer Week. Hi, I'm Clutch from the Suck Motorcycle Blog, coming to you live from the North Pole. here from a motorcycle block so for the record i don't care if you bring your trailer back your rally or anything like that i just figured I'd make a little joke because i'm sure we've all seen the t-shirt that says i brought my bike to trailer week actually i don't know i think we should make trailer week thing maybe i don't know piedmont trailer week 2024 I maybe mean, we'll have a trailer show and shine i mean i do have a trailer that i can pull on my gold wing and there you go we can see a trailer. but anyways that's a whole different rant for a whole different day so the reason here today, once again, is Sturgis Motorcycle Rally is obviously coming up. Everybody knows it. I'm recording this on Sunday, July 9th. Uh, by the time you see us, it'll be on Thursday. Let's see, 9. It'll be Thursday the 13th. At that point, we'll be... Oh, heck. Let's take a look at our watch. And once again, I'm the most prepared, the least prepared host out there. Let's see, 1, 2... We are three weeks... Basically, three weeks and a day from this video is day one of the 2023 Sirs Motorcycle Rally. So, once again, where'd the summer go? I don't know. But, anyways, so, I generally like to gather lists just every year just to talk about the rally. A little survival tips. That's what this is going to be. This is your 2023 edition of the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally so it's a Survival Guide. So, first thing I'm going to start with is weather telling you right now you need to be prepared for everything everything but snow basically it's probably not going to snow but you should be prepared for everything else i mean i'm talking about cold nights see a lot of cold nights here you can see a lot of really hot days kind of goes all over the place the way it's been this year it's been a cooler than a normal year really wet year so the nights have been a lot cooler you're probably gonna if you're from a place that's really hot you're probably really gonna enjoy that um, but if you're someone who really likes just that hot, dry rally, you're probably not going to find it this year. Um, and here's the other thing you get. You get a lot of severe weather. You tend to get a lot of freak hailstorms. You don't see a lot of tornadoes, but hailstorms seems to be a thing you see a lot around here during rally. So, got to be aware of that. Also, too, if it all of a sudden starts drying out, forest fire is not out of the question as well. So, there's a lot of weather hazards around here you need to be aware of. So... One of those deals where I'd recommend maybe getting a, the cell phone coverage in the hills is pretty, pretty good now. I'd recommend downloading some kind of a weather app, just a, if not, just, just a radar app, just so you can kind of keep a, keep an eye on what the sky is doing, so maybe you can see what that big cloud's doing in front of you 30 miles away. Maybe it'll save you from a, a wet day or a painful day if you got to run into some hail. So definitely, definitely want to avoid that. And with that, obviously, whether you want, you want gear, you want to try to have a you know, gear for about everything. Uh, I definitely make sure you have a good set of rain gear. Probably definitely going to want a sweatshirt too. Um, probably going to want a couple pairs of long pants too because, yeah, I get it. It's fun to ride in the shorts and a t-shirt or so they say. But if it's only 65 degrees on the day you're riding, that's probably going to be a pretty miserable ride. So I'd make sure you be prepared properly. All right. So the next part is bring your wallet. And what I mean by this, things are expensive. Just like any other event like this, things are going to be expensive. Um, you know, price gouging is going to be in full effect. It always is. It's just the way it is during rally. So I would just kind of get over that because, once again, that's how it's going to be. I'm pretty sure if you had something like this in your backyard, you'd be gouging the hell out of everybody coming in too, trying to make your buck. So just accept that that's just how it's going to be. Um, like I said, we got to deal, most of us around here, we got to deal with everybody else for weeks. So like I said, we're going to make money off of you. So like I said, bring your money, bring your wallet. Um, I'd recommend just kind of avoid trying to hold, do the whole dance of trying to do the rally on the cheap because 
it's going to be extremely hard. I know some of you can, but you know, there are ways, there are ways you can save some money, but for the most part, you know, I would just avoid that. Just come and just spend the money. Heck with it. I mean, you're already coming to Sturgis anyway, right? So this, this next part we're going to talk about is police and it is a huge presence around here. And anytime you have an area like ours, that's a very low population. And also you can bring a whole ton of people into it all at once. We got to You got to keep people in line, right? And well, that's why there is a massive police presence. Um, they're all over the interstates, uh, especially in Sturgis. You get on Main Street, there's usually anywhere from two to four on every single street corner up on Main Street. There's roving patrols going on. They are everywhere. Just, just accept the fact that they are going to be over everywhere. So there's a few things you want to do. Leave the drugs at home. I mean, if you really, if if you really got a thing for for whatever drug, illegal drug, just leave it at home and don't seek it out while you're here either. Because once again, people out there looking for that stuff. Um, I would recommend not coming looking for prostitutes. Just once again don't do it maybe just leave all that at home okay and if you can't if you can't handle not being off that for a week maybe you got a problem maybe you should check yourself into rehab so let's just not do that okay um here's another one use a damn porter potty you wouldn't believe the amount of people during a search rally they get hauled in because they decided they had to relieve themselves outside a porter potty because they couldn't find a porter potty here's the thing you, the police are everywhere they're going to see it. When they see you doing it, guess what? You're getting a ticket. And you're going to have to pay that ticket either right there and then or you're going to go spend a night in jail, which, I don't know. I guess it'd be easier just to find a porta potty They're all over the place. Just hold your wad for 30 seconds and find something. I mean, my God, dude. Um, don't drink and drive. That's always a big one. Um, they're always looking for DUIs because, well, one of the big things that goes to Sturgis Rally is beer and alcoholic drinks. And well, alcohol makes you drunk, and when you're drunk, we we all know this, right? So don't drink and drive. Once again, to me, especially if you're staying in Sturgis or at one of the campgrounds around Sturgis, there's absolutely no reason for you to get a DUI. If you get a DUI, you're stupid. Like that's all there is to it. You're dumb. Because there's a bus service. It's called the bus. I think you can buy a week pass for like forty or sixty bucks, and you can just get on that and ride down from the campground and go drink as much as you want and get on the bus and go home. Okay? Like, to me, there's absolutely no reason anymore to be getting a DUI. It just, it's just, and it's just not worth it. And same deal, you get to go spend a night in jail. Um, it's going to cost you a bunch of money, all that fun stuff. Okay? So, once again, don't do it. About the only law you can really break is the speeding. And even then, I say do that at your own risk. You kind of, I, what I've noticed is it kind of it it it's willy nilly sometimes with the enforcement is, and you'll see it all the time where a motorcycle might be going a little bit over. They'll pull the motorcycle over. You know every car that's right that's right behind them going just as fast as they are, but they're going to probably target the motorcycle. That's just how it is. That's just what they do. Um, I would like I said I would just do everything. Just you know do it in your own risk. The big zones you really got to worry about. Not so much on the interstate, but there's a stretch between, basically where, where you get just kind of north of right by Bear Butte there in Sturgis, and basically down in the Sturgis they have a, four or a 35 mile per hour zone that goes on forever and ever and ever and ever, and ever, and ever, and, ever. and it, I mean it's just it takes forever. It's really hard to keep the the throttle in check so keep an eye on it there just watch what you're doing um if you're 510 over you'll probably be fine but like i said i to me I, I once again all this is just i don't think it's worth the risk now without the police with all the police presence and everything you got to do with during sturgis rally i do not think it is worth the risk at all okay so another thing kind of goes in with the police and the law and all that is parking Parking is a massive issue in Sturgis, as you can expect. A town of like 5,000 people, you, you make you bring 100,000 people into the city at any given time during the rally. You got to put them people somewhere, and they're on motorcycles, and they take up space. So they don't take up a ton of space, but they take up space. So parking is really a big issue. There's lots of people, limited space. 
I'd say this, if you're looking to park on Main Street, really your your best bets, if you're like, okay, I gotta find a spot, I'd stick to the east end of Junction. Basically, Main Street, East Junction, uh, usually basically from the from the uh, the museum, which is right on the corner of Junction and Main, towards the east. That's not too bad. Usually you can find a spot to park there fairly late in the day. Um, usually where it fills up the most is usually towards the west end over by the Loud American and the, um, oh heck, what is it, One-Eyed Jacks. Loud American, One-Eyed Jacks, uh, that's probably where the, the most spots fill up. So, like I said, if you really need a spot, stay towards the east side. That's what I would recommend. If you really want to, there are some places where you can pay to park, but in my experience... Really about the only year the parking was a real issue that I can remember was during the 75th. And that one was probably the rally that, I mean, that was probably the busiest, well, it was the busiest rally they'd ever had. Other than that, usually, for the most part, especially if you're on your own, it's usually pretty easy to find a parking spot. You just kind of got to be patient and find the right spot. So, in my mind, you shouldn't have to pay for parking search if you're on a bike. Now, if you're with a car, that's a whole different story. Uh, if you bring your cage up, search is prepared to walk because... It's that's just how it is. Um, I would recommend this if if you got a motorcycle or you got your cage. I would just 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 stay on the motorcycle. Uh, you're going to get upfront parking at most places. Most places have a dedicated motorcycle parking anyway. It's just going to be more beneficial for you to stay on two wheels. It just that's just how it is. So, all right. As far as the rules go, so if you're on let's see Main Street. Main Street's probably one of the big ones where you have the motorcycle parking, obviously. They close it down from, if I remember right, it is 4th Street, which is right, let's see, it's just right directly to the west of the Loud American and One-Eyed Jacks. Basically from there, all the way down to uh, the corner of Middle and Main, which is one block to the east of Junction Avenue. Basically that's all blocked off motorcycle parking. And if you're between the barricades, you can park there. Doesn't matter... You, there's going to be lines, there's going to be yellow, there's going to be everything painted for when it's normal, during the normal part of the year, because as a shock that should be to none, but apparently it is, Sturgis Main Street does not close the motorcycles all year. Sturgis is a town, a town that has stuff that goes on throughout the year that does not involve the motorcycle rally, so there are normal spots parked there. But if you're between the barricades in downtown, it does not matter what color anything is there, you can park there. As long as you're between the barricades, you can park on basically both sides of the road backed in. Also, in the middle of the road, there's generally enough room where you can do a motorcycle and a more basically center line, motorcycle here, motorcycle here. There should be enough room there. You'll see a lot where there's a center line and a bike will park like that. Don't be that guy. Just stay on one side of the center line and you'll be fine. That, like I said, it's not that hard. Or it shouldn't be that hard, but you'd be amazed. It kind of is that hard for people to uh, figure out that concept. So basically, between the lines, you're fine. Otherwise, basically, don't make a spot. Don't park in yellow spots. Don't park in handicap zones. Don't park in anything else that's not between the barricades because, well, there's a good chance you're going to get towed. Now, I honestly don't understand the rhyme of the reason of towing in Sturgis because when I lived there, um, it seemed like they would just throw a dart at a board to see whether to tow it away or not. And I don't know if it was a deal where they're prioritizing the stolen parts the, on motorcycles or what. But there isn't a rhyme or reason to it. I'd say this in the end. Just err on the side of caution there. Uh, you know, I, I'd put it this way. If it's you can't park anywhere else and you have just a yellow spot, you know, go find a pay spot then. Because I can assure you that $10 to park for the day in a pay spot is going to be a lot cheaper than the tow bill. To get you there, because it's not the to it's not the ticket for the parking that gets you. Parking ticket is sort of like twenty bucks. What gets you though is the fact that when it gets towed away, that's where they get you, and that's what's going to cost you the most money. So just avoid it. Like I said, if you're between the bar barricades, you can pretty much park wherever. Outside the barricades, normal parking rules apply. Anything else I missed there? Oh, here's one more thing. And like I said before, if you have a cage, like I said, walk, you plan to walk, you're going to have to. Also, 2 a.m. every night, or every day, every morning, 2 a.m., they clear Main Street. And when I mean clear Main Street, they bring in tow trucks, they tow everyone out of there. You have to have everything off Main Street by 2 a.m. So, if you're going to park on Main Street, 
use your head. Um, I'd recommend if you're going to park on Main Street, make sure you have a way to get that motorcycle home. Um, if there's any doubt, like I said, go just go park, stay parked at your campground. Go find the the bus. It's called D A A D A B U S. The bus. Get a dang pass. Take the bus downtown. Um, but I will say this in the end: if it's probably it's probably still cheaper to get your motorcycle towed over trying to ride it home while you're drunk. So, but just avoid the problem altogether. Either way, point of this part is two in the morning, Main Street closes off. They clear it by, well, towing everybody. So if you don't want to have to go pay a whole ton of money to the towing company in the morning to move your bike, be a little smart. Make sure you have it off there by 2 a.m. And it's 2 a.m. Like at 2 a.m. they pull barricades and go. It. <laughs> You might be able to have maybe a couple second reprieve if, if they're not at your end, but either way, and I've heard that's kind of used to be a thing. Some guys was, you know, I heard a, someone say you haven't been to Sturgis yet until you've, till you've, till you've basically raced the tow truck to get your motorcycle off Main Street. But I would just, I would just avoid the problem altogether. All right. So some other hazards to deal with other ways. So here's a good one. Other riders. Yeah, that's right. I did. I, I'm, I'm dogging out your other riders. Here's the thing. I think of the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally as the largest exhibition of motorcycle riding in North America. Or North America. Now, that word I you know, muted like that, let me put it this way. It starts with an S and ends with Y. And, well, you can just use your imagination. Um, as what it is. But anyways, it's the largest exhibition of city riding in North America. There you go. There's another one for you. There's another way for you to think of it. If you like South Park, you know exactly what I said. And it's legit. Like, watch the street camp. Like, it is it is some of the most terrible riding that you've ever seen. Just, it's it's just chock full of, it's, you have all these, a lot of these people who don't rarely ride or, hey, look at me. I just bought my new bike a week ago and took it right to Sturgis. Just, it's terrible. It's it's just the way it is so I would keep it this way I just assume every rider there just started riding last week so I generally don't trust any other motorcycle riders in Sturgis with really anything so you're your best uh, solution there sorry about that but uh, so my wife just come up brought an important point so or, so to wrap up the other riders now I could say hey go out take a class whatever you know what it's three weeks it's too late. You're probably you're probably going down to the dealership on Saturday to buy the stupid thing. So all I can say is don't be dumb. Or you know what? Go find somebody you know who's experienced, who's actually like legitimate experience, not miles experience, like does deal does skills drills maybe. And maybe just have them work with emergency braking with you. You know, something. Because for God's sakes, you can't I don't think you could get a worse time to try to learn to ride a motorcycle than during a surge rally but like i said people are going to do it anyway so it's best a lot of things it's like just best to accept it so that's what i do just ride with your head on a swivel pretty simple okay here's another one and this one's from my wife she works at a local pharmacy before you leave make sure you have all your medications make sure you take them with you make sure you use them the right way because you wouldn't believe, she's told me, you wouldn't believe the amount of people that forget stuff. And it's not just, I need narcs. It's, people forget insulin. That's right, insulin. The, I'm not diabetic, but from what I know as a diabetic, is it's like the one thing, to me, as a diabetic, you don't forget. They leave it at home. Or they, whatever. Either way, coming in, they want insulin. Here's the problem. Um, it's... A little hard to get that and especially where you have prescription you got all here either way just bring all your medications with you it's not that hard okay just please be an adult sit down figure out what you need make sure you don't forget it okay also if you're I don't know maybe when you realize it maybe go get it maybe don't come seven don't come five states over and then realize you forgot it because I don't know that doesn't but either way 
just make sure you bring your medication. Please bring your medication. And like, like, like she said, also use it right. Use it the right way. Just uh, don't be stupid about it, okay? So another part of rally survival is you got to deal with the locals. And, well, it's a thing. And, well, believe it or not, many are not fond of motorcyclist presence here during the rally. It's just the way it is. They're just, they're not. Um, and you've really got to watch it, especially out on the roads, because a lot of them like to take out their aggressions through road rage incidents. Um, and a lot of times it's little stuff like they're going to cut you off in traffic, or they're going to swerve around you in a dangerous way, or they're going to, you know, they'll pull up, they'll get right up on you and tailgate you or something like that. Either way, it's, it's just the way it is. And there are times where the motorcyclists, we don't do ourselves any favors because we also pull some dumb stuff like, uh, you know, let's not get around a vehicle. Let's just sit in a passing lane for 20 miles and then be all shocked when all the vehicles behind us are all mad because we blocked traffic because we were going five miles under speed limit for 20 miles. So do your part don't be dumb either but just expect that yeah locals are not just not fond of their presence and you say but my airbnb hosts they're always so nice of course they are they're getting paid money talks around here so yeah of course your hotel host being whatever basically wherever you're saying it your host is gonna of course be nice to you because they're getting some cash off of you maybe not the hotel employee because they're just working a job but like i said your airbnb host yeah they're nice to you because you're paying them money that's it like that's why like let's just stop being so damn naive okay like the locals like i said they might they might be a nice great airbnb host but i tell you what they probably probably tried to run three bikes off the road on the way home because well they are annoyed by the rally even though they're have no problem collecting the money off it but they're annoyed by the rally but whatever that's just how it is so like I said, be aware of locals, watch out for locals. Even if you're a local motorcyclist here from the Black Hills, doesn't matter. You're on a motorcycle, and you know this probably as much as I do. Doesn't matter. If you're on a motorcycle during a rally, guess what? You're kind of a target for the local cagers. That's just how it is. So just be aware of that. Be advised of that. Maybe just, you know, just be cool. That'll help you a lot. And that really works in the, the next point is your attitude. Leave the, leave the terrible attitude at home. Just leave it at home. It'll be a lot easier for you. Honestly, if you bring attitude into a situation that's full of attitude, it's just going to make it worse. For example, on the road, if a vehicle cuts you off, well, now you're all mad, and now you're going to cut them off, and now you've just made the situation worse, and it escalates and escalates and escalates and escalates, and then you have the blowing over point. Now, one thing around here, we have not had any situations like that yet. But I think yet is the key word. I think it's only a matter of time before we have some crazy wild incident here. Because that's just what happens when you put people that have an attitude. And then add in other people that also have an attitude. And add in frustration. Other frustration factors of, you know, it, of everything that's going on. And traffic and everything else. And it's a powder keg ready to blow up. So don't bring your attitude leave that home or if you're going to bring an attitude bring a good attitude okay and this goes for everybody this is anybody around here just do your damn just leave the attitude at home it just makes the situation a lot easier for everyone so here's one final one and this is uh if you've never been here before you're going to be really impressed with what the scenery is the rides we have here we have so many great roads we have so many great places to go that are not sturgis there's so many other places. The rally is so much more than Sturgis. Yeah. You can walk around downtown all day, but excuse me. Don't don't miss out on some of the best riding in the world. And one advantage we have here is you don't have to go so far. Like you could ride to the Badlands and back and have a good all day run and you might put maybe two hundred miles on the bike. Um, you could run to the Southern Hills and back, same deal, a couple hundred miles. I mean, it's, everything here is fairly close together. You can see a lot of things that are fairly close together. So take full advantage of everything that is going on during the rally, because like I said, I don't, I don't, you, you'll regret it if you don't, that's for sure. So, and even if there is traffic and even if you don't, you know what, still go take advantage, 
go see their scenery, go see the sights, go check out Deadwood, go check out Devil's Tower, check out Mount Rushmore Crazy Horse, go over the Badlands, do all of it, soak it all in, enjoy it. For many of you, this is probably a lifetime bucket list trip, and I would take full advantage and approach it that way. Follow these tips that I just gave you, and it's going to make your rally that much more fun. So, either way, if you're coming out to rally next week, or in three weeks, awesome. If you're not making it this year, hey, you know what, think about this for next year, but... Anyways, once again, I'm Clutch from the Sodak Motorcycle Blog. I make motorcycle blogs talking about, well, Sturgis, Honda Goldwings, basically any kind of things going on here. I, mainly I talk about Goldwings, so that's what I have. But anyways, we have new videos come out every Thursday at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. So, Or you can hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon, and you'll get a notification every time I release a new video. So once again, I'm Clutch from the Sodak Motorcycle Blog. We'll see you later.